Who was Albert Einstein? Chapter 3, Albert takes a very deep breath and keeps thinking. Once one is born into a herd of buffaloes and must be glad if one is not trampled underfoot before one's time. Getting expelled from school, even at a school he hated, was very painful for Albert. He was embarrassed to have failed so openly. He was angry with his teachers. He was disappointed in himself. Yet he was also excited that he would soon see his family. Albert joined his parents and sister in northern Italy. Italy was so different from Germany. Albert quickly fell in love with the country. Italians were so friendly, civilized, and open-minded. For the next two years, Albert went to concerts and visited art museums. Best of all, he had time to read and to think. He studied the lives of scientists. Those who had suffered because of their thinking had gone against widely held beliefs of the time. For example, there was Nicholas Copernicus, who lived in 1473 to 1543, the Polish astronomer. He was severely criticized for stating that the Earth orbited around the sun and not vice versa. A hundred years later, in 1633, Galileo Galilei, an Italian scientist, was arrested for agreeing with Copernicus. Yet in Albert's time, no sane person believed that the sun circled the earth. The study of other scientists' theories pushed Albert's thinking even further. In Italy, he had time to write down those thoughts and answer many of the questions he had been thinking, asking himself for years. Now, he was a real scientist and even had the first scientific paper, his first scientific paper published in a magazine while he was still a teenager. When scientists have new ideas to share, they write about them in scientific journals. That's what it means to get a, pu- a paper published. For, for Albert, as for all scientists, getting papers published was very important. It was the only way other scientists could learn about his ideas and thoughts. Remember, there wasn't TVs and uh, radios easily accessible for everybody to share those thoughts. Albert fi- Albert's first published paper was about electricity and magnetism. That was no surprise. After all, he'd been thinking about both subjects for years. But to everyone's surprise, Albert began his paper by disagreeing with something that all scientists assumed was true. Scientists claimed that the empty part of outer space, the part without planets and moons, was filled with something called ether. Scientists had no idea what ether was made of or what it looked like, felt like, or smelled like, but they all agreed it was there. Albert disagreed. He claimed that the empty part of space was, well, empty. His first paper did not get a lot of attention. Although Albert was disappointed about that, he should not have been surprised. After all, Albert was a teenager who had been expelled from high school and who was still living with his parents. Who was he to challenge the theory of the world's most respected scientists? However, years later... Many of those same scientists would seek out Einstein's first published paper and marvel at the genius of the young scientists, because Albert was right. While living in Italy, Albert took long walks by himself. Day after day, he hiked in the mountains. His family's business was failing, and Albert worried that he was a drain on his parents, a sponge that took but never gave back. He had lots to think about, and a daily walk and time alone cleared his mind. I lived in solitude in the country and noticed how the monotony of quiet life stimulates the creative mind, he said. Albert made several important decisions during those hikes. He decided to study physics at college. Physics, Physics is a science of objects, their energy, and the way they move. 
After that, he wanted to become a physics professor. To do this, Albert knew that he would have to finish high school, but no school could ever own his mind, which he felt his German high school had tried to do. Albert also decided that the freedom of thinking to explore his own ideas would always be the most important thing in his life. If he got married and had children, his wife and family would matter to him, of course, but they would never matter as much, he realized, as his ability to think freely. To some people, that might sound like a selfish way to live. But for Albert, it was the only kind of life that made any sense. Albert re-entered high school in Switzerland, where Germany, German was spoken. What a pleasant and un unexpected surprise. This new school wasn't like the German high school at all. At the Swiss, Swiss school, students were supposed to ask questions. Albert especially enjoyed discussing the subject of time with his teachers. How fast does time pass? What is the future? Do we travel into it or is it already here? Will time ever run out? Not only did Albert like his Swiss school, he also liked the Swiss people. They were friendly and fair. Albert decided to become a citizen of Switzerland. After graduating from high school, Albert stayed in Switzerland and began college at the Swiss Federal Polytech in the city of Zurich. Albert had no money. His family had fallen on hard times. An uncle provided Albert with a little money, but it wasn't much. Albert lived in a dark room, ate barely enough, and went without new clothes just, as he, just so he could stay in school. Still, there were good things about this time. At college, he was making new friends. The other students lovingly called Albert the professor because he had so many theories and talked so much about physics. One of his new friends was M Mileva Merck, the only woman in Albert's class. Albert liked to call her Dolly. She, too, was a brilliant thinker. They talked endlessly about physics and music. It was not long before Meliva and Albert announced their plans to marry. Without the thoughts thought of you, he wrote her in 1900 at the age of 21, I would no longer want to live among this sorry herd of humans. Upon graduation from college in 1900, Albert was all set to become a physics teacher. It should have, should have been a wonderful time in his life. He had his diploma and he was in love. However, he could not find, find a teaching job. His uncle stopped sending him money. Albert's clothes were ragged. His meals were few and far between. His, self, his health suffered without, without a job. He couldn't afford to marry Meliva. Albert ended up taking a job with the Swiss patent office. It wasn't where he wanted to work, but it was a job. Then Albert's father died. Albert was devastated. Fortunately, he had Meliva, and surprisingly, his job at the patent office turned out to be a far better than Albert could have ever imagined. <laughs>